and welcome to your news and features electronic magazine that centers on the different facets of motoring. Now on its 34th year, this is Motoring Today. On behalf of our dad, Butch Gamboa, I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. And I'm Susie Gamboa. Here are this week's features to watch out for. On Motoring Forum, we shall discuss the effects of EDSA U-turn slots closure to motorists. Our road safety reminder on the Young Street Smarts portion centers on right-of-way of vehicles turning right. This week's Bayon Tuper shall be about the limit on the number of passengers in PUVs. The public service segment centers on the fear of some that tollways will stop RFID installation. Showcase this week shall have the subcompact crossover from JAC, the S4 Intelligent. All these plus the latest news in transportation and traffic management, as well as developments in the automotive industry, are in this week's edition of Motoring Today. Join us! We go for excitement. We go for sport. We go for style. We go for fun. We go for the new Toyota Wego. Welcome back to Motoring Today. Here now are the latest news and developments in the country's transportation and traffic management. Barring another last-minute change of mind, tollways should now be RFID-only expressways. Motorists should now have to live with the consequences. By now, all tollways will not be operating with RFID-only gates for payment of toll. And we should know by now, if tollway operators are true to their word, that all systems are in place and working. DOTR Assistant Secretary for Road Transport and Infrastructure, Mark Steven Pastor, TRB Executive Director, Abraham Sales, and Private Partners, Metro Pacific Tollways Corporation, Skyway O&M Corporation, Manila Toll Expressway Systems, Star Tollways Corporation, and Ayala MCX assured they are ready to implement the directive for full automated payment at toll gates. The TRB said that more than 3.2 million vehicles have been installed with RFIDs for use at tollways, with over 1.8 million RFIDs issued since the DOTR set the first deadline for mandatory cashless toll payments. Already, tollway operators reported that around a week before December 1 deadline, around 70% of vehicles using Expressway were already using RFIDs to pay toll. Still, heading into December 1, San Miguel Corporation and Metro Pacific reported long lines at installation sites, even after they have increased the number of places where motorists can have RFIDs installed on their vehicles. However, both SMC and MPTC tollways assured the public that RFID installation will continue at designated sites even after December 1. Metro Pacific officials also said its tollgate customer support will have people at toll plazas to assist and guide motorists and help out with traffic management. The idea behind the use of the RFID starts with efficient tollway operations. No more long queues entering or exiting toll gates. A raging and dangerous pandemic only made the cashless transactions a priority. Is 100% cashless payment working efficiently? Is it making life more convenient for motorists? 
Meanwhile, authorities are looking to motorcycle riders and enthusiasts to help boost domestic tourism and help the economy of local communities. The Department of Tourism, or DOT, and the Tourism Promotions Board have launched what they call Motorismo, an initiative aimed at encouraging motorcycle riders and enthusiasts to visit and rediscover local tourist attractions. According to Tourism Secretary Bernadette Romulo Puya, Motorismo will tap influential motorcycle enthusiasts as domestic tourism ambassadors who are in a position to help promote the Philippines as a country of fun and diverse experience. Using motorcycles, enthusiasts and motorcycle riding personalities or celebrities can highlight two-wheeled vehicles as a secure and viable mode of transportation for exploring tourist attractions with minimum health and safety protocols, the DOT said. The Motorismo Initiative will also encourage tour operators to create new tour programs to be offered to both domestic and international tourists, help those who lost their jobs jumpstart small businesses, and generally serve as a platform to decimate information on safety and health protocols for traveling. Motorismo seeks to promote the country's untapped tourism destinations and showcase culture and heritage sites, shops, restaurants in many local communities nationwide. Motorcycle enthusiasts and clubs are among the more avid adventurers looking to discover destinations and sites. Almost every weekend we see them individually or in groups riding to places yet undiscovered by tourists. They are perfect as tourism ambassadors. Continuing, transport authorities are reaching out to drivers of buses, jeepneys, and other forms of public transport modes to take advantage of the service contracting program. The LTFRB is now conducting general registration and orientation programs for qualified public utility vehicle drivers who can benefit from government service contracting program. These are being held in Metro Manila and other regions nationwide. The service contracting program is one of the ways government plans to subsidize operations of PUVs now forced to run at below capacity to comply with social distancing protocols. Transport Secretary Arthur Tugade is calling on PUV drivers to participate in the program that aims to help them recover lost income due to the pandemic. The program aims to assist drivers gain additional income based on performance-based initiatives that will also help raise the level of service, reliability, and efficiency of public transport system, said Secretary Tugate. The program is funded by an allocation of 5.58 billion pesos in the Bayanihan to Recover as One Act. The subsidy will come in the form of payouts based on the kilometers they run while ferrying passengers on authorized routes. According to the LTFRB, Drivers or operators of traditional and modern public utility jeepneys will get 11 pesos per kilometer, while drivers or operators of passenger buses will get 23 pesos and 10 centavos per kilometer. This subsidy is desperately needed by many drivers and should have been implemented a long while back. Still, it's not too late for drivers to participate in the program. And finally, work on expanding the capacity of the Subic Freeport Expressway has been quietly going on and is now near completion. DPWH Secretary Mark Villar has reported that the Subic Freeport Expressway, or SFEX, capacity expansion project is now 85% complete. Secretary Villar issued the report after leading an inspection on the SFEX expansion project meant to improve traffic and safety on the key tollway connecting Bataan and Zambales. The expansion project includes building new bridges and a tunnel running parallel to existing ones as well as adding new lanes to the SFEX. Part of the project also involves installing expressway LED light to enhance visibility at night. The expansion project is expected to expedite the delivery of goods, support trade and tourism in Subic, and complement Subic Bay Metropolitan Authority's infrastructure development. 
the completion of the Subic Freeport Expressway expansion project should come just in time when people resume traveling in numbers and transport of cargo return to pre-COVID-19 levels once community quarantine restrictions are eased and the economy begins to rebound. Those are the latest news and developments in transportation and traffic management. Coming up next is Motoring Forum brought to you by Suzuki Philippines. The MMDA has been closing more and more U-turn slots on EDSA, and motorists are complaining more and more. Worsening congestion, longer travel time, more stressful EDSA motoring. Motoring Forum discusses how motorists are reacting to the closure. Over the past few weeks, traffic congestion on EDSA began to worsen. Some said it has returned to pre-COVID pandemic levels. Others said it was way worse. Angry motorists are blaming the closure of U-turn slots along EDSA as the main cause of the worsening traffic congestion. Also blamed is the EDSA busway project, which designated the innermost lanes of EDSA exclusive to buses, meaning one less lane for private vehicles to use. The EDSA busway project and the U-turn closures are linked. The DOTR and the MMDA are coordinating in the EDSA busway project, which aims to shorten travel time of buses and therefore shorten travel time of commuters. The EDSA busway project was started when authorities were just easing travel restrictions under community quarantine levels, with relatively few motorists running on EDSA. With the help of the DPWH, the MMDA began setting up barriers to prevent motorists from entering the bus lanes. As the authorities moved to completely enclose the busway and set up loading and unloading zones, the MMDA announced that it will also begin to close the 12 U-turn slots. The closures began near the end of September, starting off with a U-turn slot near Trinoma Mall and North Avenue. As expected, this caused bedlam, many claiming they were uninformed about the closure or did not see the many signages in place days before the closure. Then. It was the U-turn slot in front of Quezon City Academy. Again, directional signs about the closure and pointing out alternate routes were in place. Still, more bedlam. With each successive closure, the one near Corregidor Street, then the one near Dario Bridge, traffic congestion got worse and worse. By the time the MMDA announced the closure, on November 23, of the U-turn slots near Oliveros Drive and the Balintawak Market, Traffic congestion on EDSA has gotten so thick, a clamor to reopen the U-turn slots began to grow louder. Congressmen added their voice to the clamor, including Quezon City 1st District Representative Anthony Peter D. Crisologo, who called for a second look at the closures and to perhaps reopen intersections on EDSA. Echoing the complaint of many motorists, Crisologo said shortening the travel time of EDSA carousel buses at the expense of the motorists is of doubtful wisdom. Prisologo called on transportation authorities and other stakeholders and private motorists to sit down and discuss alternative solutions to how the EDSA busway project can continue without necessarily closing all U-turn slots on EDSA. Meanwhile, private motorists should also learn to adjust to the U-turn closures. The MMDA and other government traffic management experts have been plotting alternate routes to avoid needing to make U-turns along EDSA. Perhaps motorists can also learn to plot routes themselves and avoid using EDSA altogether, if possible. The MMDA and local government units have lately been clearing secondary streets of obstructions identified for use as alternate routes. Before the advent of ways, many motorists pride themselves in knowing shortcuts for going from one part of the metro to the other. Some routes may seem circuitous or longer, but get motorists to their destinations faster. Transport authorities, the MMDA, and the DPWH have already spent a lot of money and effort to establishing the EDSA busway and are not about to stop in mid-effort. The closure of U-turns is expected to continue, but perhaps a more thorough study needs to be done on how to make the EDSA busway and the private motorists coexist 
better on the whole length of EBSA. The MMDA and the DOTR appear steadfast in making the EBSA busway a success. This necessitates closing U-turns. Perhaps, as some are suggesting, not all need to be closed. Perhaps, in wide segments of EDSA, U-turn slots can remain open with better traffic management to ensure the busway lanes remain clear at all times. That's our Motoring Forum this week, courtesy of Suzuki Philippines. What do we go for? We go for experience. We go for excitement. We go for sport. We go for style. We go for fun. We go for the... with us here on Motoring Today and in line with our lifelong commitment to promote road safety, here is this week's road safety tip in cooperation with Toyota Motor Philippines. As seen on the animation, vehicles turning right have the right of way bago ang mga liliko sa kaliwa. Always be patient, lalo na kung ikaw ay nasa intersection para maiwasan ang aksidente. Continuing with this week's edition of Motoring Today, let's now focus on proper driver's demeanor, especially for those driving PUVs. From Mitsubishi Motors Philippines, here is Fayang Chaper this week. Fayang Chaper lang, kaibigan. Ako si Aliano Luico. Isang kapwaan niyo, Chaper. Huwag nang ipilit magsakay ng pasahero kung hindi nakasya. Ang bawat pampasadang sasakyan ay mayroong tinatawag na passenger limit o bilang ng mga pasahero na magkakasya. Kapag puno na, iwasang magtawag pa ng ilan at ipagsiksikan. Tandaan din na bawal maglagay ng ekstra bangko sa gitna ng pampasadang sasakyan. Palaging isipin na mahalaga rin na komportable ang ating mga pasahero. Ito po si Alejandro Loico, payong chopper lang. Kaibigan, mula sa inyong kapwa niyo, chopper. What do we go for? We go for experience. We go for excitement. We go for sport. We go for style. We go for fun. We go for the new Toyota WeGo. Welcome back to Motoring Today. World of Motorsports is next. We start with the latest news and developments. Automobile Association Philippines Motorsports has released the official championship point standings after the completion of the fourth and final round of the AAP Digital Rally Trophy. Lance Gubara topped the standings with 80 points. After four rounds of the virtual rally using the online dirt rally, 2.0 gaming series and open to entries using either PC or PlayStation platforms. Second in the standings was Matt Bihako with 72 points after winning in round 2, coming in third in round 3, and scoring the maximum 40 points in the double points round 4. Third was Russell Reyes, who finished third in rounds 1 and 2, first in round 3, and fourth in round 4. Rounding out the top 5 in the final point standings are Christian Navarro, fourth with 49 points. 
and John Lawrence Bernardo, fifth with 37. And that's this week's world of motorsports. Motoring Today continues right after this break. What do we go for? We go for experience. We go for excitement. We go for sport. We go for style. We go for fun. We go for the new Toyota WeGo. Welcome back to Motoring Today. Let's now take a look at what's happening in the local auto industry. Mazda Philippines is raising awareness of the need to protect endangered species of animals like the pangoli, an anteater endemic to Palawan. It is also raising awareness of the arrival of its new pickup, the BT 50 4x4 pangoli. Will people buy a pickup named after an animal in danger of losing their habitat and going extinct? Mazda thinks they will because the BT50 4x4 Pangolin has all the attributes that people need in a pickup. Attributes the BT50 share with the Pangolin, the anteater. According to Mazda Philippines President and CEO Stephen Tan, the Philippine Pangolin is an endemic and critically endangered species that deserves attention and concern. Like the BT-50, it is a reserved yet highly proficient hard worker. In launching a pickup named after the Pangoli, Majda said it was acknowledging the important role everyone plays in preserving the delicate balance of the environment. The BT-50 4x4 Pangoli is powered by a 3.2-liter, five-cylinder common rail turbo diesel engine that generates 200 horsepower and 470 newton meters of torque. It can load cargo up to 1,086 kilograms in weight or 1,214 liters in volume in its reinforced cargo bed. The Pangolin cabin can accommodate five persons comfortably in leather upholstered seats. Infotainment comes from a 7-inch touchscreen JVC infotainment system with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring capability. And it proudly rolls on 17-inch alloy wheels from Rota, an indigenous manufacturer of world-class rims. China's fourth largest automotive company has set up shop in the Philippines. Chang'an Motor Philippines Incorporated, official distributor of Chang'an vehicles, has brought in an initial five models to compete in five market segments. The Alspin Subcompact Sedan, the CS35 Plus Subcompact SUV, the CS75 Plus Compact SUV, the CS95 7-seater midsize SUV, and the Iado EV460 electric vehicle. Each of Chang'an's five models made available comes with features unique in respective segments, according to Chang'an Motor Philippines. The Alspin comes with sunroof, cruise control, blind spot and rear cameras, tire pressure monitoring system, and leather seats. The CS35 Plus subcompact SUV comes with panoramic sunroof, engine remote start, passive keyless entry, blind spot and rear cameras, 10-inch touchscreen display, and 7-speed DCT. The CS75 Plus compact SUV features a panoramic sunroof, 360-degree panoramic camera, engine remote start, 12-inch touchscreen, 7-inch digital cluster, cruise control, triple drive modes, and six airbags. 
The CS95 midsize SUV comes with a 2-liter turbocharged GDI engine, 6-speed automatic transmission, 12.3-inch touchscreen, 10-inch digital instrument cluster, 360-degree high-definition panoramic camera, and panoramic sunroof. The Aado EV460 comes with most of the amenities already mentioned, plus six airbags, electric stability control, leather seats, and more. The Chang'an vehicles are now available at 15 dealerships in the country and 29 sales outlets now in operation. And Chang'an Motor Philippines plans to upgrade the sales outlets into full-service dealerships. Kia Philippines has recently opened the portals to Kia Virtual Showroom, which it says gives customers a 100% worry and risk-free and enjoyable alternative experience of viewing and shopping for Kia vehicles, right in the comfort and safety of their homes. Kia then aired four reasons to visit the digital showroom. One, it has browser-friendly layout. The Kia Virtual Showroom makes the online visitor feel right at home like they were in the comfortable, expansive customer lounge of the dealer. Upon entering the Kia Virtual Showroom, clients may easily browse through the models based on vehicle types. 2. It comes with all-around action. By tapping on the model vehicle, the client can choose to check the vehicle's exterior and interior with a 360-degree viewer. 3. It provides info on demand. While visitors get the full view of the Kia vehicles, the virtual showroom also provides relevant information while they browse the interactive display using profusely positioned touch points. 4. It provides smooth transit to the physical world. The virtual showroom comes with a Find a Dealer tab to help clients locate the nearest Kia partner dealer and begin the process of buying their dream Kia vehicle. Toyota Motor Philippines is going all in with its bets in a bid to win, perhaps another triple crown in sales even in the year of the pandemic. These bets include the refreshed Rush lineup. Interestingly enough, the E-grade variant of the Rush that has gotten the most number of upgrades. The Rush E now comes with three rows of seats for seven, as well as a reverse camera. This means Toyota now offers an all-seven-seater Rush lineup. All variants retain key rush features like the high 220mm ground clearance, 7-inch infotainment system, back sonar, plus safety features like 6 SRS airbags, anti-lock brake system, vehicle stability control, and more. Even with the upgrades, the Toyota Rush 1.5e retails at 1,023,000 pesos for the automatic and 983,000 pesos for the manual transmission variant. Toyota believes that at these points, the Rush E-Grade retains its position as a modern, stylish, spacious, efficient, yet reasonably priced family vehicle. The refreshed all-seven-seater Rush lineup now retails at all 70 of Toyota dealerships across the country. Introduced in the Philippines in 2018, the Rush quickly cemented its position as one of Toyota's best-selling models. TMP sold more than 15,000 units of the Rush in 2019, making it the best-selling entry SUV model of the year. Morning Today now brings you our Car of the Week on Showcase. Courtesy of Prudential Guarantee. It arrived around the middle of the year, a couple of months after authorities began to ease community quarantine restrictions, just in time to offer an affordable subcompact crossover when many are looking to acquire budget friendly vehicles for safe personal transport in the time of COVID 19. Showcase takes a look at the JAC S4 Intelligence. Cool crossovers are now trending. More and more people, especially the young, are buying crossovers. 
automakers are bringing in smart and cool subcompact crossovers targeted at the young and entry-level market. One cool-looking subcompact crossover is the JACS4. At 4,410 millimeters long, 1,800 millimeters wide, and 1,660 millimeters tall, the JACS4 is bigger and more spacious than most crossovers in its class and price point. It's 2,620 millimeter long wheelbase, a factor to providing stable ride and handling is also longer than most in its segment. The S4 exterior dimensions also allow for a 520 liter cargo capacity in the back. With the second seatback's folded cargo capacity doubles to 1,050 liters. The JAC S4 looks sleek and sporty with a wide stance and a distinctive six-sided grille, slim dark air dam, the over fender and side cladding and rear bumper. The JAC S4 arrived in three trim levels, the luxury, the intelligent, and the ultimate. The JAC S4 intelligent exterior features halogen height adjustable headlamps with automatic light function, LED daytime running lights, cornering lamps, and front and rear fog lamps. The S4 intelligent also comes with shark's fin roof antenna, roof racks, and a power moonroof. Enhancing the sporty look to the S4 are 17-inch alloy wheels wrapped by 215 by 50 R17 tires. Powering the JAC S4 is a 1.5 liter turbo IVVT gasoline engine that generates a maximum 147 horsepower and 210 newton meters of torque. In the S4 Intelligent, the engine is mated to a continuous variable transmission that drives the front wheels. The JAC S4 arrived in local market looking to set itself apart from the competition by being equipped with the latest technology for convenience, safety, and connectivity. The S4 Intelligent comes with smart keyless entry and push button start, electric park brake, auto hold, and cruise control. Inside the cozy interior are seats upholstered in leather. The driver can adjust his seat electronically, and the multifunction steering wheel tilts to get the optimum driving position. An LED instrument panel provides the driver all the information he needs about S4 status and performance through three selectable modes. Other comfort and convenience features in the S4 Intelligent include remote controlled windows, automatic climate control, rear windshield defoggers, and heated power adjustable side mirrors. The infotainment system features a 10.25 inch LED touchscreen with Bluetooth connectivity, smartphone link, USB port, and six speakers. Two USB ports are also installed for rear passengers. VS4 Intelligent also comes with a surfeit of passive and active safety systems. These include dual airbags, seat belts with reminders for all passengers, ISOFIX and immobilizer. The S4 Intelligent is also equipped with anti-lock brake system, with electronic stability control, hydraulic brake assist, brake override system, hill start assist, reverse video images, and 360 degree panoramic images and over speed alarm. The JAC S4 Intelligent is a price of under a million pesos. This should make this subcompact crossover a good option for young first-time buyers searching for value for money personal transport. That's our featured vehicle on this week's showcase, courtesy of Prudential Guarantee. Drive worry-free with Prudential Guarantee's auto insurance program with a free 24-hour nationwide roadside assistance included with your comprehensive auto insurance. 
Rest assured, we'll take care of you and your car, wherever you are. Prudential Guarantees Auto Insurance Program. 100% worry-free driving. We now have our segment that dwells on the wide array of motor problems not only in the metro but all over the country as well. This is where we present problems referred to us or we ourselves see and hope to fully find solutions for. Here's our public service segment brought to you by Honda Cars Philippines. The Department of Transportation or DOTR has earlier set November 2 as the deadline for toll operators to implement full cashless transactions at toll gates, later moving it to December 1. By now, frequent toll users have long been able to install RFID stickers on their units. The opposite, obviously, isn't that so. Operators have opened slots for scheduled RFID installation but many have aired frustration and fear upon not getting one and finding out that slots have been occupied until January of 2021. But the DOTR, the Toll Regulatory Board, and the tollway operators say fret not as RFID installation shall continue even after the December 1 deadline. They've also assured motorists that designated installation sites will remain open and a lane at toll gates will cater to those who need RFID right there and then. But frequent users now say that with RFID stickers installed, new problems came out. Reloading is what? Reports have it that reloading stations are always offline and load credit doesn't instantly reflect on the account. There are even claims that there are missing credits. There are also reported technical glitches on the readability of some systems. Indeed, there is no stopping the full cashless transactions at tolls. The government and the private concessioners should also make sure that everything is running under control. So that this move will further serve its purpose to improve travel time with shorter queuing time at toll plazas, which in turn reduces fuel consumption by lessening engine idling, lessens vehicle wear and tear, and supports the cleaner initiative of the country. That's our public service segment from Honda Cars Philippines. And should you yourself encounter motoring problems that need immediate attention, please feel free to contact us. See the details being flashed on your screen. And that's the week that was in motoring. Thank you for joining us. If you missed some portions of our show today or any of the past episodes of Motoring Today, you can watch us online on motoringtoday.ph anytime today at your convenience. Also, please don't forget to follow us on social media. Until next week here on Motoring Today, now in its 34th year of continuing service to the general motoring public with a lifelong commitment to promote road safety, stay healthy, and be vigilant at all times. On behalf of Butch Gamboa, our dad, I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. And I'm Susie Gamboa. Happy, Happy motoring! motoring.